When you open the exercise file called 18 Formula Auditing, a message about links will appear. Please select Don't Update. Then another one will appear about circular references, and please click OK. In this lesson, you will learn about links, circular references, and more. The commands from the Formula Auditing group will be useful when you work on large and complex files, especially when they were created by someone else. We can divide the connections with other cells into precedents and dependents. Precedents are cells used by the formula in the cell we are checking. Dependents are all the cells that use data in the cell we are checking. These are just the definitions, so don't worry. Everything will hopefully become clear when I show you some examples. Example 1. In this example, there were promotions in some states during some months, but we currently don't know which states or months were selected. The formula calculating the sum of sales in the regions covered by promotion comes back with an error. We need to find out in which states and in which months the promotions happened, and how we can correct that error. Select the cell with the formula, in our case cell G25, and under the Formulas tab, select Trace Precedents. Clicking on this displays the arrows connecting the formula with all the cells it's taking data from. We now not only know which data the formula uses, but also which data caused the error. That one is marked with a red arrow. Trace precedents and trace dependents are most commonly used to understand formulas created by others, to find the source of an error, to find the reasons for circular references, and to check whether the data you want to delete is used elsewhere in the worksheet. To remove the arrows, click on Remove Arrows. A similar result to formula auditing is obtained by double-clicking on the cell containing the formula. This time, the cells that the formula uses are marked with coloured rectangles. This method only allows you to view the precedence of the first level, which means only the cells directly influencing the result of the formula. This solution does have an advantage. It's easy to modify the formula by dragging one of the rectangles to a different cell. Example 2. In this example, we'll activate the cell with the sum of the sales for branches 1 to 7, cell C9, and click Trace Precedents twice. Looking at the arrows, we can see that the sum, 1039, is the result of adding the sales from the four cells above and an unknown number of references to other sheets in the same or another file. These references are marked by a dashed line leading to the worksheet symbol. In our example, the cells refer to data from one file, which can be seen in the formula bar. If there were more references, it would look the same, also shown with only one symbol. The second level contains the cells with the sales data for the products from branch 7 in row 3 of this worksheet. Both the Trace Precedence and Trace Dependence tools allow you to check multiple levels of connections between cells. Now use the Remove Arrows tool and check the cells that depend on cell G9 by double-clicking on Trace Dependence. The data in cell C9 is used by cell E13 which is used by cell G13 and a cell or cells from another sheet or sheets in another Excel file that is currently open. You can see it's shown here with a spreadsheet symbol. This tool won't show any dependents if they are in a closed Excel file. Let's now focus on cell G13. It seems that it's the result of unnecessary calculations and should be deleted. Before we delete it, we'll check to see whether this data is used by other formulas. First remove the arrows, then activate cell G13 and click Trace Dependence. In our case, a message has popped up saying the Trace Dependence command found no formulas that refer to the active cell, so we can now delete it and be certain. Example 3. In the worksheet Formula Auditing 3, in the bottom left-hand corner, it says Circular References G13. This means that the formula refers to itself, which is like saying someone is five years older than they were five years ago. 
From this riddle, you can't guess the age of the person, and likewise, Excel cannot solve circular references. The difference, though, is that circular references are usually a little more complicated. In some cases, Excel automatically displays arrows which show where circular references are. If they are not shown automatically, you should activate the cell containing a circular reference and click Trace Dependence until it shows a full circle where the arrows return to the active cell. The profit in 2019, in cell G11, depends on the sales in 2019, in cell G13, which makes sense. The profit change, in cell H11, must depend on the profit in 2019, cell G11. The next connection is the one we are looking for. It doesn't make sense that the change of sales depends on the change of profit. The sequence should be reversed and the formula in cell H13 should be corrected. If we make a mistake and loop the formulas in Excel, the program will inform us about circular references and the dependency errors will be displayed. The method about correcting errors applies to situations when someone has ignored the automatic Excel warning. Thank you for watching lesson 18 of the Excel for Beginners course. I recommend you watch all the lessons from the Excel for Beginners and Advanced Excel courses and then check your skills by doing the Excel job interview tests which are at the end of the Advanced Excel course. The next lesson is called Relative and Absolute Cell References.